is up, everybody. It is your boy, Mark Cordone, episode 29. They have not canceled me. You know why, guy? You know why they have not canceled me? I've been because wondering I create about that. my own show. I create yeah. my own show. There's nothing you can do about it. Episode 29, I am so stoked. We have Guy Golan, coach, um, who is going to talk about the idea of why Mr. Right is almost always Mr. Wrong. Now, Guy, th- 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 <laughs> when I first read this, I was like, crap, does this go the other way around? Does Mrs. Mrs. Right, is she almost always Mrs. Wrong? Or is that something that we don't even have to consider in this case? <laughs> Are those totally different well, factors? <laughs> it's, uh, you, be- you better consider it, right? <laughs> Now, Mark, you're you're a crazy guy, right? <laughs> a crazy guy? I guess so. I'm, I'm sure, yeah. absolutely. So, let me ask you a question. You did you ever? I, I know you've done a lot of things. Have you ever gone uh, skydiving? No, I'm I'm afraid of heights, bro. <laughs> ah, good, good, good. Yeah. All right. Well, imagine this, okay? A lot of people want to go skydiving, and okay. um, what if I told somebody on the airplane we're about to jump, and I'm like, listen. You're about to jump out of the airplane, and there's a 60% chance that the, your parachute will probably not open correctly, or at least not according to the expectations. Do you think people would jump out of that airplane? I, I, I wouldn't, and I'm crazy. <laughs> yeah, there you go, right? A 60% so, chance is not good, man. <laughs> All right, so if, if you had a 60% chance that your parachute will not open, you would not jump out of the airplane. Now, what about marriage, right? If you look at divorce rates all around the world, doesn't matter where, right? It fluctuates. So if you are in the bigger cities, like New York, London, Barcelona, right? Those rates really tend to be around 40 or 50% divorce. And, you know, other places, it's lower. And, of course, there are a lot of variables that play into divorce rates, such as how early you got married, your family background, and so forth. But let's assume that the average divorce rate is like 35%, okay, on average, all around. And let's assume that a lot of the other people who are married fall into the other group, and that is they're married, but they're not necessarily happy in the marriage, right? So the, the key question is, and I ask this, I hear this a lot and ask this a lot is if you didn't have children, would you still stay with this person? Right? Mm -hmm. So now we have another group of like 30 to 40%, right? Who are married, but they're not there out of choice. This is not what they hope for. They, they really want to escape, but they can't because they have children, they, they don't know what to do. There are a lot of factors, right? So if you take those two numbers together, that the divorce rates and those rates of the people who are living together but are not happy, they don't have a happy marriage, that's like 60, 65%. Now, Mark, what is the most important decision a person can make in their life besides hair color? I don't know. It drops down after hair color. I don't really make decisions after <laughs> after that. But uh, I'm thinking like uh, things like kids. Uh, uh, uh-huh. Getting married is up there, dude. Uh, that listen to Mark. Know, that is yeah. that is the number number one most important decision any person, man or woman, will make in their life. The person you will marry will determine who your children are. Okay, it will de- determine your financial future and it will determine your overall health, right? Not only physical health, but mental health. So this is the most important decision people make. Now, Mark, when you buy a new iPhone or car or anything on Amazon, how much time do you spend doing research? A lot, right? <laughs> I do a lot of research. Right, we do a lot of I research, quite right? Bit, yeah. Right? So you go, you go on a review sites, you go on blogs, you read consumer reports. People do a lot of research. But when it comes to getting married, people get married not because of in-depth cognitive thinking, right? This is not like in-depth consideration and research, but rather something ridiculous called falling in love. <laughs> right? 
<laughs> so, so are you saying that we need to be more like consumer reports when we <laughs> when we go into the courting process and dating? <laughs> like, <laughs> well, but but think about this, okay? We just we just determined that the decision on mate selection process will be the most significant decision of your life, and we also determined that that decision will really influence and impact every single major outcome of your life, physical, mental, financial, and of course, the most important, who your children are going to be, right? Yes. <clears throat> Don't you think we should do some research on that? Yes, and I the, think that's what we should yes. talk about in this show. Uh, Let, let's let's, kick, let's off talk about say, it. Let's kick off and say hi to everybody, Guy. Um, everybody who's tu tuning in, um, just in case you are tuning in, this is Guy Goland. He is going to be talking about why Mr. Right is all my, all, almost always Mr. Wrong. And that was such a great way to set things up. I'm like, oh, crap, I've been doing it all wrong this whole time. I've been falling in love. I've been, there is, so um, just in case you haven't met me, my name is Mark Cordone. I am a positive psychology coach, which means two things. Feeling good, feeling good, the dopamine part of your brain, right? And then the other thing is living in fulfillment. And I would love to hear what Guy has to say about feeling good and living in fulfillment when it comes to uh, uh, sort of these things like marriage, unhappy marriages, and how those things break up. So just really quickly, Guy, are you married? I am. Yeah, I'm absolutely so married. Given, given that, are you feeling good on a daily basis? And are you living with, with passion on a daily basis? I am feeling good every single day because I am also a student of positive psychology and I'm an, an empowered individual. I love it. I love um, it. And the passion I have is absolutely a passion for life, right? Love it. And a passion for my family and a passion for my wife, but not necessarily the kind of passion that we learn about in the movies, right? This is oh, not the passion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is not a passion from you know the from Frozen or the Princess Bride or the Disney movies. Oh man, Princess Bride was so good, dude. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Um, but uh, yes, let's talk about that in a second. Let's say hi to the folks who are who are watching right now. Um, so for those of you who are watching live, or for those of you who are watching on the replay. If you're like Guy, if you're feeling good on a daily basis, let me reframe it, but feel like you're living in purpose. Delete passion. You're living with purpose and fulfillment. Give me a big old heart. Guy, can you give me a big old heart? How do we pump that heart in, uh, in, in Sarasota over there? Can you give me a big old heart, Guy? Guy won't do press, uh, press no, a button. Give, no, give me a heart. Give me, like, make it with Oh, like hands, that. You know? Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got to do it. Now, I, I, yeah. usually, I usually only do that after I score goals. I do that for the, uh, <laughs> for the people on the stand. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now, if, you're, um, if, if, if it's Monday and you're like, oh, my gosh, no, I'm not living. I'm not feeling it today. I'm, I'm feeling out of whack. I'm not feeling fulfilled. Or what guy just said about my marriage totally resonates with me. And I am not. I don't know if I'm living completely fulfilled. That's all right. It's okay. Give us a thumbs up. Give it to, give us a thumbs up. Those are those days are okay too, y'all. Now this is the other thing. Whether you're having an up, whether you're having a down, or whether you're having an all around, if you're still optimistic about your future, whether you're not in a relationship, you're in one and you can see the possibility of changing, and you know that you can grow from this day forward. Give me a big old wow face. Can you give me a wow face, guy? <laughs> God, I won't do it. Give me a wow <laughs> face, guy. I will cut you. Mark, right I'm now. <laughs> Mark, Mark, you're gonna get Mark, you're gonna get a wow face this entire interview. You're <laughs> wowing me from second to second. I love it. I love it. Um Jorge wants to say hi to you from um, Puerto Rico. Good to see you, Jorge. Um, also, peace and love, Mark. Good to see you, Jorge. Are you not going to invite Guy to Puerto Rico, brother? Oh, my gosh. I'm cutting you off. So, Guy, before we talk anymore. Hey, I love uh, – Mark, Mark, I yeah. love Puerto Rico. I've been to Puerto Rico many times. My brother-in-law lives in Puerto Rico. I have many friends in Puerto Rico. Love the island. Jorge, what part of Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico are you in? Let us know. Let us know. Um, 
even before we go into this, um, because very much are someone who um, is is quite well no like you know what you're talking about with statistics and on this subject, but I want to hear a little bit more about your story, man. Like, I, I want to know how you got to this point where this is one of one of the things you love talking about and coaching about. So, mm -hmm. so I'm just opening it up to you. What's your story, bro? All right. Well, thank you very much. I yeah. um. <clears throat> I'm a, uh, I'm a full-time university professor. I've been a professor for almost 15 years. I was a tenured professor in one of the elite schools in the Northeast. Now, one of the things I, uh, that really shaped my journey was uh, my marriage. I married a wonderful, wonderful woman more than 11 years ago. And uh, I met her when she was in medical school. And I went on an entire journey with her through medicine. Now, Mark, you look like a healthy guy, so you probably have never been to the doctor or not so often. <laughs> now, most of us, most of us don't know much about the world of medical doctors. We don't know much about physicians, right? Everybody's like, wow, being a doctor is the greatest job on earth. And of course, you know, my wife, when I met her, she was always studying hard and very dedicated like any other doctor would be. But what happened, Mark, over the next decade is I walked with my wife throughout her medical training from her early med school days, her intraneer surgery when she worked 90 hours a week, four years of residency, another year of fellowship. It never ever ended. And what I've seen along the way from my cohorts in New York City where she was had a residency, I saw a lot of people who are living with either medical doctors or people in the world of finance, hedge funds. You know, it's kind of the space I walk around in. You see all these like super high achievers and what you see is their spouses are paying mm. humongous prices. And I was, I was obviously one of those um, partners, right? Because while you're waiting to enjoy life with your spouse or your partner, they're always at work or always thinking about work. So yeah. this led me to my niche. Mark, I'm probably one of the most niched uh, life and relationship coach out there because I specialize in uh, high achievers and more specifically the spouses of high achievers. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, you're so lucky your husband is a hedge fund manager. You're so rich. You're, you know, you're so lucky or your husband or your wife, right, is, is a medical doctor or in law and they're so great. And the answer is yes, but a lot of people who are married to those high achievers feel left behind, feel neglected. They don't get the attention they deserve. And in many ways, they feel like they got a raw deal. Now, so, can I you know, ask, did you, did you feel that at, at, at some point? I felt that at every point and many points. Okay. Right? I mean, it's okay. it's okay to be in a relationship and feel unhappy with some aspects of the relationship. The real question is, what do you do with those feelings, right? So the natural, natural tendency is to say, you know what? I want out. I, I want a different kind of life, right? Or uh, I'm going to leave or I'm going to cheat or I'm going to do, you know, anything to fill in the empty spaces. And what I've, what allowed me to be very successful are the tools of positive psychology and of coaching, which moves away from the dialogue of being a victim and towards the dialogue of being empowered. So, so talk to me, man. Like you're going through these feelings, right? These these sort of feelings of of, of feeling like a victim. Um, some people are saying, "Man, ostensibly you got it well off right now, right?" Um, but yet you're sort of feeling these feelings. Um, and, and now you were talking about the application, right? The actions that you take are really the important things. So, what were some of the actions that that you took, in, in you know, when you were feeling that? Well, one of the biggest mistakes we all make in relationships is the concept of attachment, where we attach our happiness to the person in the relationship, right? So we almost expect the other person to fix the problems in our lives. So, you know, when you're single, you face one set of problems. And then naturally, you know, you meet somebody, you're like, oh, I'm going to get married. Everything is going to be okay. Right, Mark? You've heard that before, right? Oh, yeah. People tell you, oh, just get married and everything's okay. And ultimately, <laughs> you're, yeah, ultimately yeah. you're replacing 
you're replacing one set of problem with another set, mm. right? Mm -hmm. So um, the expectation that your partner is going to fix your life is a false expectation. Um, my hair, as you can see, is not very full. Right? <laughs> I have probably 15 your hair, pounds overweight. Your hair is I have 15 rocking. pounds overweight. It is rocking. And it I'm, is shiny. It is thank beautiful. You, thank you. <laughs> thank you. So I have I've, I've bad hair. I have a, a few extra pounds, and I'm not a good student. My wife has long, <laughs> beautiful hair. She's skinny as it comes, and she has eight, you know, 100 in all the AP classes. We, we try to, to do the yin and yang and, and really fix ourselves or fix something from our childhood when sure. we select our, our partner. And that is ultimately the cause of many of the problems in the relationship. Okay. Now, w was there a part of you that was like, um, that was engaging in, in this, uh, the, the idea of attachment that like, you know, this is going to go away when we get married, blah, 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 blah. Like, were you, were, cause it sounds like you were cognizant that that might happen. I might replace a whole old set of problems with a whole bunch of new ones. Um, mm -hmm. and if you were aware of that, what, what did you do, uh, about it, uh, either with yourself within your mindset, your actions that you took or, or with your spouse. So one of the things we do a lot in relationships is put meaning where there is no meaning, right? So mm. a, a typical situation for my clients is uh, them sitting at home and waiting for their spouse to come back from work or their partner to come back from work. And they're sitting there and they're sitting there and they're sitting there and wait and then waiting for the other person to come in the house in order to feel alive and to do things, right? And and that is such a common thing that people do. And then, you know, you're, you have to go to a dinner party, you have to go to friends, you know, you're looking forward to go to a show and you're waiting for them. You know, it's like your life is on pause, right? Your life is on neutral and when they're gonna come in the room, then you're gonna kick it into drive, right? Mm. And that is something yeah. a lot of people do. And the key really is not to wait for the other person. The key is, okay not to expect the other person to be the instigator of your happiness. You have to be that person. You have to lead the charge. You have to grab life and just suck the juice out of it and enjoy every right. moment. So what were some of the things that you were doing in terms of, you know, in, 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 I mean, gosh, going, going through residency is, is a huge thing for, for a person. And then now that I'm thinking about it, the spouse of another person can have all this time you know, and, and if, if, you know, you're not going through a residency yourself or other things, what were some of the things that you were doing in terms of being proactive about your happiness? Yeah, absolutely. So the, the number one feeling that people who are married to high achievers feel is a sense of neglect and social isolation, right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, oftentimes our partner is a person who fulfills a lot of those needs. So you're sitting at home they're out there connecting with people. You're waiting. The, the best thing to do is jump out and go and meet people. I mean, if you're talking about positive psychology, and I'm sure you're a big student of uh, Tal Ben-Shahar from Harvard, he talks about the need for genuine connections, not Facebook connections, not getting likes and hearts and thumbs up and and. 200,000 friends on Facebook, right? Not wild faces, but rather having <laughs> deep, meaningful relationships with at least, you know, two, three people in your life. So one of the things you can do if you're in that situation is go out there and meet people who you can genuinely connect to. And the best way to do it is by helping people, believe it or not, right? We always think about how we can take from everybody, but when you give, that's the most fulfilling thing, and that's where the deep, meaningful relationships come into play. I think that's really amazing that you said that um, uh, because I, 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 I'm, I'm Mark, thinking you're speechless. Back Mark, 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 you're speechless. Did you can ever you hear me? did I just catch you speechless? Yes, you caught you caught me speechless, bro. Um, I, I'm thinking right. back to to the the times when I've I've gotten into like a hobby or something like that, and even last time I I, I got onto a roller derby team, right? And awesome. part of it uh -huh. was because of this feeling of neglect and isolation, right? And um, rather than trying to take it out on somebody else, 
um, or waiting for, you know, um, I, I'm in a co-parenting plan, waiting for my time with my son, I became proactive about it. And I ended up getting this group of people who completely had my back. So yes, I was completely quiet. And by the way, Tal Ben Shahar is on the cover of my book recommending it. Wow. So thank you for dropping that. Wow. Um, so so wow. can, you, can, but, you, can you put it back back up? I want I want my I want my followers <laughs> to see your book. Put it back up there. Look at that. And with with that with that hair too and that smile. Look at that face. There we go. <laughs> Plugged you. For everything now. Um so 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 guy, um let's let's get this let's go I, I think those are some proactive steps that you're talking about um when, when you when someone starts feeling that and i don't think it, it's i don't think that happens just when someone has a ridiculous amount of hours to work and someone does not it i'm guessing it happens in many more uh, marriages than we think um by the way Perfect. jorge just gave you the thumbs up to um yeah jorge um, so let me, let me go back a little bit in your story. Um, you talked about the idea of this is a ridiculous idea that we marry when we fall in love. Did you marry because you fell in love? Not in the traditional sense, right? I mean, <laughs> you know, I, I, I think, I think I, I got married when I was a little, uh, more mature. I, okay. my marriage was after another long-term relationship that occurred gotcha. maybe seven years before. So I okay. felt, you know, that experience in, you know, they say second marriages are much better than the first. Right on, dude. <laughs> second yeah, marriages are much true. better than the first. That's awesome. That gives you permission but, to not be perfect. Uh, listen, you have the, anybody has a permission every single day. We are not perfect <laughs> beings, right? But, but why are, why, Mark, why are second marriages better than the first? Because marriage requires a lot of skill sets. Sure. Right. And when we're young, we're 22, 24, and we, we fall in love, right? We, 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 we have the fancy wedding and we're now married and now we're in love. And now what? Right. We don't have the tools. We don't have the skill sets to build a, an effective working marriage, working relationship, right? So if you don't have those tools, you're, you're doomed to fail. So in my situation, I came in a lot later. I was 35 already when I got married. And okay. I, was, I had a high sense of self-awareness at the time. And I was able to go into the relationship. Do you know how long I dated my wife before I told her I'm going to marry her? Clue. Two hours. Two hours and oh, five you vodkas. Completely close on me. What, tell us how long. Come back here. Let me wait for you. Are you there? I am here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You can okay. Hear me, right? So you come. You froze right on the delivery there. So how long, uh, guys? It's always it's always like that. It took me <laughs> two hours and five vodkas to tell <laughs> my wife I'm going to marry her. What? Wait, you knew your wife for two hours? Well, to be honest, she's she was uh she, she's a younger sister of a good friend of mine. So I I knew I knew her for many years. Okay, okay. So now, so you knew her for many years, but that was the first time you actually met her in person. Oh, that was the first time we engaged in a meaningful manner. Okay. But but you know, okay. I don't know if it was two. I don't know if it was two hours or four hours. We all went out. I had very deep, meaningful conversations with her, and um, then I had that feeling of connection, right? Which is one of the most misleading feelings in the world. You know that, Mark, right? I I did not know that it was one of the most misleading, but I know what you're talking about with the connection, right? So so you meet yeah. a stranger. And you meet a stranger and you feel, you're, you say to yourself, you know what? I, I almost feel like we met before, right? I almost yes. feel like I know you already. And that feeling is the feeling that most people who fall in love point to, right? As the moment of truth. But to me, as somebody in this space, that feeling is an indication that you're about to repeat an old pattern. Right. And that's why we have 
that's why we have that sense of familiarity because we're always dating the very same person. So maybe it's not, I feel like I've met you before, but it's, I feel like I've had this feeling before. And so you're, you're jumping back into a pattern is what you're saying. And so the same parts of the brain yeah. that are firing then are mm -hmm. firing yeah. now. And that's really yeah. the familiarity that you're getting. Yeah, we, yeah. we fell in love with that. Yeah, we fell in love with, with archetypes. We fell in love with yeah, archetypes. Are... From our childhood, yes, sir. And from from all the folks that you from the folks that you've been coaching and just anecdotally, um, is this yeah. something that you're seeing as the main reason why people get married? Is is that initial? No. Okay. No, no. no. Okay. Uh, you know what? Why do people get married? For the same people, a lot of people, a lot of people do a lot of things. Which is, I'm thirty. It's time. Right. Or a lot of people in my world, you know, somebody in finance, right? They're an associate, an investment bank. It doesn't look good that they're still single at 28. It's time to get married because that's what you do in this stage of the career. <laughs> people, you know, people in, in our field, in the space, at our rank, we're supposed to be married by now. Right. So yep. people in the world of finance or in law or especially doesn't look good if you're single above a certain age. So people are like, yeah, you know, yeah. or, or you know, a lot of there are a lot of people who are not working. They're like, all right, I'm on 30. It's time to do it. I, I want to have kids. You know, I'll marry the next person with two legs and two arms. Yeah, in in positive psych, that's called settling, right? Um, because <laughs> yeah. you're, you're you're not totally going after what you or you're you're not you're kind of lowering the expectations for what you know will make you happy. Mm -hmm. for happiness for you but because of maybe some societal expectations or some status quo or some weird uh, blueprint for the way that you were supposed to live life when you were younger you're following that type of path that's very 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 interesting um i wanted to throw this up there now i don't know if you can't see if you can see this on the screen but we have to get to this title why mr right is all almost always mr wrong um, is this what you're beginning to get at right now? This uh, this idea that you know this person that we initially have that feeling for is almost always uh, a, a, ba a bad. Yeah. Yep. Okay. More about so that. Uh, yeah. So you know um, what I'm talking about is inspired by the book. Uh, it's it's a really cheesy title, but you know most books. Unlike yours, that are really great, and have a cheesy title, right? And uh, one, the book, you know, how to win friends and influence people, right? All that. But um, the book that really inspires this conversation, and I recommend it to everybody, is called "Getting the Love You Want" by Dr. Herval Hendricks, right? Okay. And he really talks in depth over there about the mate selection process and how we are automatically, almost automatically, attracted to people who allow us to fulfill a, um, a role within a dam dynamic, right? So if somebody grew up in a household where the mother was very overbearing, critical, or, or the father for that point, they're more than likely to identify with one of the parents, mm. right? And, and take their role. So if you had a very critical mother or father, you know, you're either going to become that very critical person and select somebody who is kind of, um, let's say, um, they'll be open to that behavior, right? Or you'll be the person who's taking the brunt of the criticism on the other side. So that is not a recipe for success, right? We try to fix the dynamics of our childhood, the dynamics of the, the dynamics between our parents and between us and our parents through the mate selection process. And what Dr. Hendricks argues is that our subconscious doesn't have a sense of time, right? So right now, as we are grown men, you and I were also two-year-old children, you know, in the subconscious, on the subconscious level. And therefore that's where a lot of the errors come into play. Oh, I'm a two-year-old child on a conscious level too, brother, man. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I I agree most people are not that 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 is really awesome the dynamic of that in in terms of um, there are some things that are deeply embedded beliefs that we we cannot make conscious 
um, uh, that dictate our actions, um, there seems to be a lot of uh, errors that we can make along the way in, in terms of we think we're making a great decision when in fact it's uh, maybe deleterious of us to, to make the same uh, 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 decision again that we haven't learned from in the past. Very interesting, very yeah. interesting. Um, so let's get to this, let's get to this. So let's, uh, let's go and fast forward. And by the way, congratulations on your marriage. Um, um, from all <laughs> indicators, I, I've heard that your wife is a wonderful person who went to a wonderful undergraduate program. And, um, oh, yeah. and um, l- but let's say that um, someone is in a marriage that just straight up sucks. You know, um, mm-hmm. and, and they're, they're they're doing things. They've done the proactive things to be happy. They're they they you know they've they've um, maybe gone through a couple things where uh, some of the unconscious things are now more conscious to them, and it still sucks. What what can you possibly do when you find yourself in that kind of position? It's a tough one, right? I mean, I don't yeah. think anybody out there who I don't think anybody who is married will tell you that they, you know, everybody has those days, right? Yeah. You know, being a marriage uh, decades long, you're going to have better days and worse days. There's no way around it, right? So, what do you do if, in the long term, there are problems that cannot be resolved? I think that's the real question we're trying to answer here, right? Yeah. Because most marriages will have typically one or two underlying um, theme of problems, right? I mean, sometimes it's external things like uh, financial problems, right? Mm-hmm. And, and that, that puts, a lot, that's a, puts a big strain on the relationship. But oftentimes, you know, the, there, there are no external forces putting the pressure, but the pressure is coming rather from the inside. Um, the number one key to successful relationships between people, regardless of dynamic, is active communication. And not only active communication, but uh, aware communication, conscious communication. That means that we don't speak indirectly and hope that the other person will understand what we're trying to say, but rather we learn how to communicate and how to listen in an effective manner, which will allow us to uh, bridge between the two sides and really resolve the problems. Now, is that a, is active communication something that is different per person? Like for you and I, you know, Mark and mm-hmm. Guy to be actively communicating with each other right now. Does that look very different from you actively communicating with your spouse? Or is it the yeah, same it set of skills? Okay. It does, um, because when we communicate with our spouses, remember, our spouses or our, our partners are not just, or they're different from our friends, right? Mm-hmm. They're, because we're so close with them, because they are members of our family, the, the relationship dynamics are more have more layers to them. So, Mark, you may have, like, the worst day of your life, but you're not going to go out and take it out on strangers at work. You're not going to go out and take it out on your, on your friends during happy hour, but you have to take it out on somebody. You have to express those feelings somewhere. And guess where you're going to do it? You're going to do it in your home with your partner. Not because you want to take it out on them, because, but rather because they are the only person who you trust to be weak next to, right? You're, you're, they're the person that you trust to open up to. So a lot of times we throw our emotions towards our partner and that can lead to a lot of really bad feelings from the other side. Another problem that we encounter with communication between partner is, uh, you know, they call it passive aggressive behavior, but it's really the inability to communicate what we need or want. So when children really want something, but they don't have the verbal skill set to do so, they start crying and screaming and throwing a fit, right? Two year olds, three year old toddlers. But we often do that as adults. So, you know, the most classic example is, you know, uh, the husband, let's say, is at home and the wife comes back to work from work and he starts fighting with her over the fact that the, her car is dirty or that she didn't do the dishes or that she forgot to, you know, buy something at the store. Or in fact, what he's really frustrated about 
was him not feeling loved by her or the fact that he feels like he doesn't get enough attention from her. So we do that, you know, women to men, men to women. We do that all the time. And that is really a source of problem because, you know, this kind of uh, passive aggressive communication leads to more feelings of hurt and rather than solving the problem. Okay. Okay. So there's some acting out that can, can be going on. All right. Let's, let's go here. Let's say that, that there are just some things that it, it's beyond suck now. And, 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 um, and go into a breakup, right? We're, we're going to be together forever because I'm in love with you guy. But like mm-hmm. in terms of a, of, of a marriage, right? It goes into a, a, a divorce. Um, how do you recover? from a divorce? How do you d- recover from a, a bad uh, breakup? Mm-hmm. It's a really good question. And it's yeah. not easy. Right? So I mean, okay. you know, unless, unless we're dealing with cases of abuse, or extreme narcissism, or, you know, severe, you know, drug abuse or something, I, you know, divorce is always something we try to avoid. I mean, it's it, divorce is a terrible thing. Sometimes we find ourselves divorced and that happens and it happens to a large percent of the population. So what do you do the day after? I mean, it's really not easy, especially when children are involved. So if children are not involved, it's much easier to heal faster and move on. When there are children involved, it's more complicated because a person you divorce will be part of your life for the rest of your life, or at least, you know, until the children grow up with it. That's a real challenge. Um, What happens to a lot of people within relationships, within a marriage, is they lose their sense of who they are, their true selves. Because, you know, there's no way around it. You know, when you live in a relationship, you see yourself within the context of two people, right? Within the context of the marriage. When you're alone, you have to reinvent yourself from the beginning, the day after divorce. And that process can be very scary. That process can feel very lonely. And that process can make a lot of people feel completely overwhelmed. And this is exactly where the world of coaching really helps you to gain those tools of empowerment. And, you know, as soon as you're done feeling, you know, really, really, really shitty for a while and you're ready to move on and live life, those tools can really help you succeed. Okay. So talk to me a little bit more about like, you know, Coaching is a very broad term, right? And so I don't want to make any expectations about one what one coach does or what one a, another coach does or their processes, procedures. But but talk to me a little bit about um, you as Guy the coach now, because you've definitely told us about Guy the person and Guy the the, the spouse and how you came here. So so talk a little bit more about you as the coach. Well, I always start with hope. Mm. I mean, I'm, I'm a big believer of hope out. You know, when you have, when you believe you're going to succeed and when you don't have faith in the process and in the outcome, you're almost doomed to fail. Uh, you know, a lot of people want to get there. A lot of people have those goals, especially New Year's Eve, right? But a lot, uh, very few people actually achieve it. And one of the secrets, you know, secret sauce, to success in life is to believe in the possibility that life can get much better for you, that the things that you want for yourself are things that you can actually achieve or are not just things on paper. So what I do with my clients, uh, you know, I come from a position of great empathy and great optimism. I work with them. I don't take many clients, by the way. I only work with clients who are completely dedicated to their own success, right? I mean, it's almost a prerequisite. Yet, Coaching is hard. You have to work hard. If you want to change your life, it's not something that's going to happen in a three-day seminar. It's not going to yeah. happen if you listen to a podcast or read a book. It's daily. It's daily habits, daily routines. Yeah. It's hard work. So I always equate it to people who, you know, go to the gym and want to look like the trainer. Yeah. Right. And you know, it's, it's only going to happen if it becomes a lifestyle. So positive psychology and empowerment are nothing short of a lifestyle. 
So mm. if you're dedicated to taking that road, that's what I will do for you as a coach. I will I will walk you through the process. I will be your your biggest supporter and your mentor, and I will provide you with actual tools that you can use in everyday life. But you're going to be the one who's going to do the hard work. I'll be the one making sure you succeed with you. But it's all about you yeah. being completely ready to completely change your life. I don't want to go. In, I don't want to go into Tony Robbins mode here because there are two I know, of us on screen. To, the screen is going to blow up. But look, I mean, well, I tried. The, I tried to get you to do Wow Face, and, and you wouldn't do it. You're so strong. <laughs> no, no, I'm it, it, uh, today. Yeah, you're totally but, controlled but, today. But you have to promise you know us what? this: you, the next goal you score, uh -huh. you have to make a Wow Face. I'll do that for you for sure. Okay. Mark, the reason why, okay. the reason why the reason why people like Tony Robbins get so wild and pumped up and all of that. Yeah. It's it's one I believe it's I don't know Tony, but it's 100% it seems 100% genuine. I think people like us we go into coaching because we really really care. Oh, absolutely. And we know it can work, right? So we care and we know it works. Right. Yeah. So now because we care and because we want to work, we want like, come on, get off your ass, go out there and live the life you deserve. Yeah. Stop suffering. You don't need yeah. to. You can live a happy life. Life is great. Life yeah. is wonderful. Life is a gift. We're so lucky to be here. Right. Yeah. yeah. Every single and person, I, every single person should be happy. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It is. It, it is not a it, it, I don't believe it's a privilege to be happy. And I don't think it's something that people need to to pay for it's a right to be happy and sometimes we completely fall off the mark and that's all we need a little bit of coaching to do is just get us back on the right track um and and mm -hmm. i love the fact that you talked about different styles right like the tony robbins style is tony robbins style it works for some guy your style is your style my style is my style but if you can if there's one thing that you could put together with all of us we all have a zest for our clients and for happiness and and for for you and me i don't know tony's not here but tony if you want to jump on now uh, give me a call i got your number um you can come <laughs> call in but we have a zest for not only our clients but doing this in a way that is uh rigorous and scientific so that's why i wanted to have you on a university professor um because a lot of people talk about love from the standpoint of well yeah i fell in love once and then it didn't work and so i'm just going to use the method i used that may cause more damage than harm for some people. And so I'm glad that um, you're able to talk about the research and you're eloquent about um, what it is that you do. Now, I, I guess the thing that I'm, I'm really interested in without giving away names and all this stuff and stories, but what are some of the things that you've seen as outcomes when you were, when as a result of, of folks engaging in, in the coaching process with you? Mm -hmm. The first thing you're going to see, and, and probably this is the most important one, mm -hmm. is when you start working with a coach, the first feeling you're going to have is, oh, my God, why didn't I take a coach 10 years ago? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and Mark, I have a coach. I have a coach yeah. myself. You, you can't be a coach if you don't have a coach, yep. right? Agreed. You, you, I mean, so I have a wonderful coach, yep. right? Everybody knows Mark from the coaching jungle, right? He's my coach, yeah. right? And, and when you work with a coach, what they do for you is they, they allow you to like connect to something within you, right? That you really love, but you weren't connected to before. And you're like, oh my God, I feel so much better now about myself, yep. right? And I'm going to take the, the tools I have now and I'm going to do amazing things. So I, I really think that's what the immediate sensation yep. of coaching will do. As soon as you start being there, Right, you're gonna feel different yep. right away. And and guy, I'm sorry to cut you off, but like your coach wrote in. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, so like that's how much like I I have. I mean, I have so much deference for your coach, Mark. Um, that it was a like yeah, I was tag, kind of tag him, tag him, tag him on the thing. We'll definitely tag him on the thing. He's he's awesome. He's awesome, awesome, awesome. But yes, I think that's that is one of the first things that you feel like. Why the hell did I not do this sooner? And for some people, I had someone on the show a couple of weeks ago that basically said that coaching. Once you understand uh, coaching and you find the right one, it feels like you're jumping through a wormhole. It feels like you're going from point A to point Z. And life no longer feels like it's going slow. It doesn't feel like it's even going at a pace that you're used to. It begins to accelerate. 
in terms of the things that you've always wanted happening so much sooner, you know? And so, you know, whether you're woo woo and you're like, oh, I'm going to manifest that, or whether you believe in things like, you know, the positive psychology of flow or self concordant goals, it all is the same thing. You go from point A to point Z. And sometimes a coach can really get you going on that. So I'm glad that you, that you brought that up guy. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's really all about accountability. You know I mean? Oh yeah, it is. So, totally, dude. Yeah. Totally. Um, so, so guy, I've got your email address, uh, happy day coach at gmail.com. What are we going to get if we email you? What are you going to get? Yeah. Um, what, what can you, we expect? You're going to get a, re a response. You're going to yeah. get a response right away. <laughs> That's where you're going to get. Yeah. So, you know, um, <laughs> I'll tell you what um, I'm not going to do. If you, if you email me, I'm not going to start spamming you with stuff. Um, if anybody wants to yeah. get in touch with me, I'm, you know, Facebook and I have a, I have a really awesome Facebook group called Life Reimagined that yep. supports and empowers uh, transition and change. So people are going through a divorce, people are changing jobs, people are going through illness. We're there with a small community. It's closed, but anybody wants to jump in, I'll let them in. And, um, yeah, you know, if you email me, I'm going to tell you about some things that are happening uh, these days. I have a newsletter that's about to come out in July, which will be like behind the scenes uh, look into my coaching. It's going to deal with issues of empowerment and goal setting and, and uh, change and problem solving. So I'm going to have a newsletter coming out pretty soon. I'm going to have a group coaching program starting oh, right on. in June for uh for women specifically who are feeling very unhappy within their relationships within their marriage so i'm okay. I, i'm only going to i'm only going to let probably four or five more people into that group i keep my groups closed but it's going to be awesome and then again if anybody needs one on one coaching I'm always available absolutely now just i guess just to throw this out there um as someone who is n not a woman who identifies as a man and someone who is not in a relationship right now. Um, mm -hmm. But I want to, uh, this is, this is very real guy. I can't believe I'm talking to you, but talk to me, talk to me. Make sure that I, I like, it's almost like I want to jump, but not jump. I want to get into a relationship without feeling like I made the same mistakes in the past. Is that something mm -hmm. that you could, coach like a person like me around or, or is there a referral that you can make for me <laughs> well no that's going to be that's going to be the july group coaching program we're going to have a group uh for for men and for women right separate not together who want to spend that's time sweet. on figuring out how to make the right decision with how to find the right partner right because that's it's sweet. so easy to find the wrong partner and this group program we're going to make it happen in July, and I'm going to give a really, really great rate for that one just because I feel that, like that is something that is so needed out there. We're going to make it happen, Mark. I love it. I love it. Um, you, you did not know that I was going to ask that, but it was just going that way oh. where I was like, I need to ask him about this, whether you're going to do something for guys uh, who are ready to jump mm -hmm. back in. But um, I, yeah. I want to throw this out there. Happydaycoach at gmail.com. I know you want to say something, but I also have in the show notes right now, Facebook reimagine. Click right on it and we'll take you to a uh, guy's group. Um, so if, before we jump into the last thing, guy, what, what was it that you wanted to, to throw out there? Uh, I was about to I say you, that okay. a, lot of a, lot of a lot of people go to matchmakers. Yes. Right? And yeah. the matchmaker is going to be like, oh, Mark, you're, you know, this age and this age and, you know, this is your background and I have a nice girl for you, you know, <laughs> uh, who, who fits who fits your criteria. And, you know, when people are asked, what are you looking for in a partner? You know, we all have a general description of their physicality and we all, all want somebody who's nice and smart and, you know, has a kind heart and all of that. But how many of us are really conscious of what it really is that we're attracted to on the subconscious level and what we really need, not, not what we want in a partner, but what we need in a partner to be happy Huge. in our lives. Huge. And that's the kind of, that's the kind of stuff we're going to work on in the July group, the coaching group. 
Awesome. Awesome. Um, Guy, I called you Guy all of yesterday. And so I forgive you. I forgive my, or forgive me for that. Um, I really, really love this one, man. Um, and I love the fact that you're like an hour, hour away from me. So, so this will not be the last time you see this redheaded Asian walking up the road around you. Right. Um, so thank you for, for, for coming on the show. Um, the email is happy day coach at gmail.com Facebook life reimagined group just click on the link right there and it's ready for you to go um we've got uh we've got some one-on-one -on -one coaching that's that is uh you know guy is doing and in july we've got some cool stuff going on with some group groups specifically for men and groups specifically for women guy with that said i'd like to thank you for being on the golden mic um and and for getting in touch with me through our buddy Mark, our coach, our coach Mark, um, and I have a final activity for you, man. If if if, if you don't mind, okay. um, um, so uh, I don't know how much visioning you do in your practice, but this will be a small visioning activity. So I want you to imagine right now that uh, they're in Sarasota. I don't know if it's raining by you; it's pouring right now over here. But I want you to imagine that your ceiling just opened up, and a golden microphone is descending from the ceiling and stopping right in front of you, Guy, all right? And for two minutes, that golden microphone translates into every language all across the world. And so when I flip the switch, you have the golden microphone and the golden microphone is live. Are you ready? I, hope I am so. ready. Guy, your golden mic is live. To everybody listening out there on the golden mic, I have one simple and clear message for you. Life is good and happiness is waiting for you around the corner. Don't spend another day waiting. Go out there and transform your life. Guy Golan, you have said it all, my friend. It, the Facebook group is Life Reimagined. Happy day, coach at gmail.com. This was episode 29. Tomorrow we have the founder of, uh, what is it called? We have a founder of a wine company who is also doing retreats around the world. It should be completely fascinating. She's also a comedian. Uh, Molly Oppenshaw McCarthy. Uh, we're going to have fun with her around 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. But give it up for Guy. Guy, you're the last of episode 29 the 20s are over we start our 30s tomorrow and it's gonna get even better get in touch with guy i'm your boy mark cordone here's to feeling good here's to living fulfilled and let me ask you something once you're living good feeling good and living fulfilled what are you going to do to serve the greater good i'm your boy mark this is guy see you later take care bye